Connection established. Welcome. It's been long since I made a video where hardware is playing main role. Let's change that today. Already existing weather station projects on the internet made me want to build weather station for myself. So I did it. Let me show you how. This is mainly based on solar powered Wi Fi weather station project from Open Green Energy. For all the components and links, Please check video description. I wanted to make as much as possible mobile and autonomous weather station. To realize that, I will need constant power anywhere I place and leave that weather station. So I decided to go with lithium ion, rechargeable battery, small polycrystal solar panel, and TP4056 module for battery charging and protection. Okay, power is sold. But what? will be the brain of this operation. To satisfy my desire to have portable fighter station, I've decided to go with Lilligo t version 1.3, later on version 1.4 module, with ESP32 and SIM 800 l module. Lilligo module comes with antenna and wires for power. Espressive ESP32 will be the brain, which will contain program code. In SIM 800L communication module, I'll add SIM card that will connect to GPRS mobile station with APN information and send collected data to a web server. Big note, if you're planning to use SIM 800L module, check that your mobile operators in your country are still supporting 2G GSM GPRS networks. This will not work with 3G and higher generations if GSM is not supported. I'll buy cheapest mobile data package for SIM card, because sending of weather data will need very little internet data. In one week, this weather station should not create traffic more than 100 megabytes if sending data in period of 15 to 30 minutes. Which data will be collected? I decided to get the basic data for weather like temperature, humidity and pressure. To collect the data, BME280 sensor will be used and then to get altitude value out of temperature and pressure data. I will also try to get UV index with SI1145 sensor. Later on, I've also decided to add MAX17043 sensor to get battery percentage. All sensors should use I2C to send data to ESP32. To connect all that components, I'll need few more parts. And those are some wires, breadboard, prototyping board, screw terminals, switch, and battery holder. I'm going to use my private website to store and pull data with PHP in my SQL database, and then visualize that data with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. On the end, we are going to put all the electronics in a nicely 3D printed case. Ok, let's start with the project. For start, I will solder pins to Lilligo board and sensors. Now, let's connect Lilligo board and sensors with the help of wires and breadboards to test the readings. C++ code can be found in video description. Ok, after uploading short code to check that sensors are working, I will add full code I prepared in Platform.io. Once I saw sensor readings are working, I decided to transfer all this to perfboard. Add all sensors that I mentioned before and let's connect everything to work as we want. Get all the components and wire them like I did on this scheme. Working with perfboard was so messy and often I connected two or more pins I shouldn't connect because they were so close to each other. Just to give you an example, I didn't see but I soldered SCL line of sensors to ground pin and I2C was not working. I spent a day and a half looking and searching why I2C communication is not working until I saw those pins that should not be connected 
or were physically connected. <laughs> that was a relieving moment for me. So be careful if you are planning to use perfboard the same way I did. Other option, which would be better and cleaner, would be to make PCB board and then just solder pins that will hold module and sensors on it. Maybe I will make that in future. We'll see. One very bad thing that happened in this process of making this weather station. In one point of making, I wasn't careful and burned Lilligo module. No problem, I've ordered another one. But to arrive it will need more than a month. That's why I decided to include Vimos D1 Mini Pro module with ESP8266 in this project. I've prepared the connections for it and was planning to use it until new Lilico module don't arrive. But on the end I've decided to leave all the pins for VMOS, so now I have option to switch between the two modules. With Vmos module, sending data to a web server was over Wi-Fi and not over GSM, as it is the case with the Lilico module. This is more appropriate if you want to use weather station, let's say, inside your home, inside your local area network, where you have Wi-Fi coverage and you do not need to pay extra costs for mobile data, like I need for SIM card, but it's not too much. I noticed that Max 17043 sensor for battery percentage is not working as I thought it will probably because of the battery voltage that is sometimes higher than 3.7 volts or some wrong connection. Somewhere I saw it may be because of wrong re resistor value on TP4056 module. I'm getting a result over 100%, which is not okay. This overcharging is not good for battery, so I should find a solution for that. If you have any idea of how to fix that, please tell in comments section below. Okay, anyway, back to code. Again, in short, with this code we will connect to GPRS mobile station, send collected data from sensors to a web server and store it, store those data in my SQL or MySQL database and then visualize that data on a web app. Code is based on one from random nerd tutorials and modified a little bit. So check out awesome Random Nerd Tutorials YouTube channel to see a lot of great stuff, mainly with ESP-based modules. Code is excellently written and commented, so you shouldn't have any problems understanding it. For those who want, I will go through it. For those who don't want, feel free to skip it. To find out your APN name, check APN Changer website. I didn't need to use my username and password, so I left it empty. Also, my SIM card doesn't require PIN, so that's also empty for me. Then we need to add server domain, name or IP. Here is some example. Resource is PHP file, that's like a REST app API, receiving data from SIM800L module and storing data in MySQL, and port, which is in my case standard HTTP port. API key is added for security and must be the same as in post data PHP file. Next we have our pins for Lilligo module and pins for sensors that will work over I2C communication protocol. All sensors will be connected to two same pins. I would say that's one advantage over SPI protocol. Here is defined sea level pressure that will be used to calculate altitude. Then we have definitions for serial monitoring on 1152 double O bouts. Below is definition of modem. I to see library I used is wire. Tiny GSM is for SIM 800 l module. SparkFun Max is for Max sensor to get battery percentage. And this one we do not need. I was testing something with it, but SparkFun 1 is better in my opinion. Then we have some lines for AT commands, which we can leave, but I didn't use it. Here are libraries for sensors, as the names are saying. Below are definitions for I2C of power boost and sensors. 
because of problems with finding max sensor with Lilico module, I commented code connected to it in the whole program, which you will see as we go through. Here you can see creation of tiny GSM client. Here is definition of time for deep sleep. Then we have power boost when powering from battery, which we will start in couple lines below. In setup function, we start serial monitor, I2C communication, set pin modes and states and let's initialize the modem. We do not use SIM pin. Let's perform sensors check. We'll use timer to wake up ESP32 from deep sleep. Now in loop function, we have connection to APN, then connection to web server. After that, we can make HTTP post with request data as you can see. Here are values of sensors for humidity, temperature, pressure, UV index, and then we have minus for battery percentage, as we do not read value for sensor, and last is altitude. Once HTTP post is made, connection is closed and Liligo module will go to deep sleep mode. That's all this code is doing. Not so complicated, I would say. So if you skipped code review, simply look for your mobile operator APN, GPRS info and fill them in. And then also add your website domain or IP. If you don't have one, you can make a website locally, but then you will need to make it publicly available. With some dynamic DNS solution, or another option is uh, if you have static IP from your ISP, you can try to port forward it. In the case that you know better ways of how to get website from local to public, please add it in the comments. This will maybe help someone. And that's basically everything to change about the code if you're following this project. Let's also go through other program which was made for Remus module that's connecting to Wi-Fi instead of GPRS. Here you will need to add your SSID and password of your Wi-Fi. Same as on Liligo module, add a web server domain or IP, PHP REST API file, port and API key. Define pins for sensors. On Wemos module, max sensor is working, so here you can see its definition. Then we have all the libraries, different ones from ESP32 are ESP8266 Wi-Fi and HTTP client. Here are definitions for I2C for sensors. In the setup function, we start I2C communication. Then check sensors are found. Make restart of the max sensor and start it. In loop function is made connection to Wi-Fi and reading from sensors. Then connection to web server and execution of HTTP post, same as was in Liligo module. Connection is then closed and his speed goes to deep sleep for 15 minutes. Do not forget that D0 and the reset pins must be physically connected to enable deep sleep mode for Vimus module. Let me upload the code now. This one with Wi-Fi connection will go to ESP8266. Another one to Liligo ESP32. And code is uploaded to boards and we can move forward. Next to do, set up your web server. You can use development environment like XAMPP or WAMP to create a web app locally or by public web server and domain from some hosting. As I mentioned before, you can't send sensors data to local web server unless you set up dynamic DNS for it or you have a static IP that is publicly available from internet. I will work with public web server in this video. Let's prepare my SQL database and PHP files for web server. In database, you want to create a table with primary key, values for sensors and timestamp. Let's mention again that full code is available in the video description. As a base, we have this code here, again from Random Nerd Tutorials project. I've just added a few more fields for all sensors data. 
Then I created index PHP and added some cool stuff in there. I'm gonna go through the code. Just replace this and add yours database information and API key. Same you have in C++ code. Then we'll need to add database information to post data PHP file. Okay, web app is now ready. Our weather station should now be able to send data to our web server and we should see data in web app. If having website locally, check on localhost by typing 127.0.0.1 or IP of your PC which you can find in terminal by typing ipconfig. I can show you that for me web app works just as planned. Nice. On the first visit we see data from all the sensors. Here are visible parts for Liligo module, based weather station and also for Wemos based ones. And below are graphs with history readings of data that are quite interesting. I've used Bootstrap with already made HTML and JavaScript parts. This should be it. Let's test all this and see how it is working. Yeah, this is more or less what I planned at the beginning. I must say I'm very happy with the results. For the end, let's make a nice weather station case and print it. I found one 3D module in Thingiverse and modified it. I'll add its link below. Also, I'll add my version of model if you are planning to follow with the same components. I've edited 3D model in Tinkercad, then converted it to the right format for printer in Ultimaker Cura. For printing doors of the case, around 2 hours were needed. Printing of case was around 13 hours. Settings I've used are next. Temperature of printer head was 200 degrees Celsius. Bed temperature was at 60 degrees Celsius. Printing speed was 50 millimeters per second. Infill was 10% and layer thickness was 0.2. Final result is looking pretty good. If you're wondering what was total cost of this project, I can tell you that it was around 60 US dollars, if not counting website hosting. I spent a lot of time working on this project, but nevertheless it was the most awesome one for me. And that's it. I hope you learned something new and found useful information in this video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to like it. And if you want to see more content like this, subscribe. Good luck!